Planet Labs just finished unveiling their new Planet Insights platform, an all-in-one environment that integrates their current product portfolio with Sentinel Hub, the key driver behind Planet Labs' acquisition of Synergize in August of 2023. The market, however, appears to be indifferent to this unveiling, with Planet Labs' share price reaching a new all-time low of $2.02. In this video, let's take a look at Planet Labs' most recent earnings to identify, is Planet Labs worth considering as an investment, or is it better off to be left alone? My name is Scott, welcome to the channel, let's talk Planet Labs. So starting with the full year revenue, full year revenue landed at $220.7 million, landing within guidance. Oh, not that guidance. No, not that guidance. Not that guidance either. There we go landing within guidance. Q4 saw a record gap gross margin of 55%, operating margin of negative 58%, and record comprehensive earnings per share of negative 11 cents. The difference between net income and the comprehensive income is that the comprehensive income includes foreign exchange adjustment and change in fair value of available for sale securities. So to put this in plain English, it's a more conservative and more accurate way of determining the company's earnings per share. Earnings are great and all, but if it gets all chiseled away and you're left with nothing, no earnings. Simple as that. So looking forward, Planet Labs guided only one quarter out. Now, typically with Q4 results, they will guide for the full year. But given how last year went when they revised and then revised and then revised, I kind of can't blame them for wanting to not overpromise and underdeliver like they kind of seem to have a history of. So... Take it for what you will. What they're saying is that they're only providing one quarter because they're so unsure about how this platform is going to affect revenue. We'll kind of give them benefit of the doubt, I suppose. And I mean, see how this goes looking forward. For this upcoming quarter, we have revenue expected to be 58 to $61 million. Non-GAAP gross margin between 50 to 52%. Adjusted EBITDA of negative 11 to negative $9 million. And capital expenditures of 14 to $17 million. So at the end of Q4, Planet Lab's backlog was approximately 242 million, of which approximately 67% applies to the next 12 months. So if we take 67% of 242.4 million, we arrive at 162.3 million. This compares to the previous full year of 220.7 million. Now, I tried going back one year to look at the previous 10K to get to kind of identify what kind of backlog they had then compared to what came to fruition over the next 12 months. And unfortunately, there's not a single mention of backlog in that 10K. So as far as what kind of um, expectation we can expect for this top up to take us from the $162.3 million and kind of catch up, if not surpass what's happened over the past year, ideally, right? We're a bit in a bit of a gray zone with that. So what I can tell you is that based on the quarterly guidance that was given to us here, is they're expecting 10 to 12% for the quarter that we're in now compared to the quarter from a year prior. So I mean, even if we take the entire model and we extrapolate that forward at 12.5%, we'll call that, that's what the valuation model is currently set at. Planet Labs kind of looks like a decent deal um, at these prices, but let's not get too ahead of ourselves. We have an update that their first Pelican Tech demo, which was launched in November, continues to perform well. Planet Labs is expecting to launch additional Pelicans, including the first production satellite during the next 12 months. For those unfamiliar, the Pelican is Planet Labs' next generation high resolution satellite capable of 30 centimeter resolution with up to 30 revisits per day. These will ultimately be replacing their current high resolution satellites known as SkySats. For year end, Planet Labs' liquidity was $317 million. This is comprised of cash and equivalents, including restricted cash, both current and non current, as well as short term investments. Reducing this liquidity by the average quarterly burn rate of $22.4 million leaves us with three to four years of runway. With Planet Lab expecting to be adjusted EBITDA profitable by the year end, modeling this forward using past guidance, we can make an assumption that Planet Lab is expecting to be making a profit no later than 2027. In other words, Planet Labs has a strong enough balance sheet to provide the runway for them to reach profitability. Based on the current share price, what the market is expecting, in my interpolation of this, is that they're only expecting somewhere between 10 and 15% growth for the foreseeable future. And yet I'm still not buying. And here's why. I realize I'm gonna ruffle a few feathers here. 
So I'll put a disclaimer here. Like, this isn't what I want to happen. This is what I think will happen. Over the past four to seven years, the state of living, especially in Canada, isn't too hot compared to the past seven years that one particular political leaning has had to improve things. And blame it on the sickness, blame it on previous leaders, blame it on whatever you want. I mean, go on X, go, go to the grocery store if you need to, go to the gas station, try renting or try owning a house. When I go on social media, it's just story after story of people crying in their cars, like, you know, two, three jobs, a bunch of roommates that they don't like. Regardless of whose fault it is, I think a lot of people will, will simplify it. I know I, I'm, in, I'm in Canada and I know a lot of people are like, well, over the past seven years, things haven't got better. And that's a lot of time for things to improve. Therefore, they'd look at, well, if the left isn't working, I'm going to vote right. Now, my concern with Planet Labs is all of the government funding that they currently have is going to be not wiped away, but definitely not increased if there is a swap to the right. And I could be wrong, and I hope I'm wrong. But if you were to consider what climate change initiatives are going to be looking like over the next five years, they're probably going to be dialed back in, if anything. Then past that, there is sort of like, I don't know if I'd call it like a, a moral dilemma, but I'm not comfortable with the amount of overstep that I'm seeing, especially here where I live, in the name of saving the planet. And if you want to take it a few steps further, it's not hard to see where this goes. It's going to get to the point where, like, you you want to buy steak for the family? Well, you've you've reached your carbon limit. You want to you want to drive to a friend's this weekend? Sorry, you drove your car too much this week. And, I mean, the company providing that data is yours truly, right? It's frustrating to, you know, over the past five years have watched this and companies like this, the whole climate change movement, just become a joke, honestly. So whether it's like, whether you're looking at it through like a concern of, you know, what is... 30% of Planet Labs' revenue taking a hit on top of what might already be declining revenue growth. Or if it is just the moral dilemma of supporting this whole carbon restriction. I mean, like I said, you see where it goes. You see where this is trending. And it's not, it's not going to be freeing for everyone, right? It's kind of hard to back up Planet Labs at this point. And that sucks. It really does. Because, I mean, this is like the ideal like climate change company. But it's just concerning. I mean, especially when you see Kevin Wheel no longer being the Planet Labs president. He's now moving to, to be a member of the Planet Federal Board. And when you cross-reference that with his previous role at Twitter and Vijaya Gade's role, uh, previous role at Twitter who's she's on the board of directors as well and i mean to oversimplify and i don't i mean i mean i don't care if i sound crazy if this is all public knowledge at this point but old twitter was basically a branch of the government it was literally to the point where it's like hey this person saying this thing about this particular political candidate silence them this person is saying something about the global sickness silence them and they did it all in the name of safety right so do you think planet labs is going to be any different i don't to summarize i just i don't love the direction that i see planet heading i'm concerned that the um, climate change incentives are going to be stripped with the change of power uh, going to the right and I just don't think that Planet Labs' management has a backbone in terms of if they were told to make a difficult decision for the betterment of everyone versus what they're being told by certain entities or organizations I don't have a lot of faith in them like I do with certain other companies that I'm invested in so um, I'm going to leave it there 
I realize this hasn't been the most um, upbeat episode. Uh, my apologies, but I think that more importantly than being like super optimistic or super bullish, I think it's more important to be realistic. And I'm just, I'm not sure that I like what I see the more that I look at Planet Labs. So um, I wanna hear from you guys. So please leave a comment below. Tell me if you agree with me or almost even more importantly, if you disagree with me, um, cause maybe I'm wrong about the whole thing, but maybe I'm not, you know, thank you guys for the hangout and I look forward to seeing you in the next one and hope you have an awesome day. Peace.